Hello everyone, I am Ravinder Desai, Head Operations, Art of Living River Projects. I have done my post-graduation in computer applications. I have been in US for 8 years in my two decades of IT industry. been into financial services area. Let's talk today about uh, river rejuvenation and art of living. River rejuvenation, there are so many definitions these days. Uh, something related to Namami Gange which is about cleaning. What do we do differently in river rejuvenation, right? So the definition goes, as per as our scientists or subject matter experts do say, it is rejuvenation of entire riverine ecosystem. What is riverine ecosystem? See, river is not just one stream flowing. It is a network of streams flowing, right? From the catchment till the valley, we see the water flowing. So from the catchment area, which we call the first order, basically it forms the first stream flowing from there. Couple of streams join together, the second stream, then the third stream, the third order, fourth order. That's how the whole network of streams is all about. So that is something of what the river is all about. But is river only that? No. The ecosystem of the river is also about the water bodies, the forest cover, everything. So once we have to revive a river, it does not mean reviving a particular stream. It means reviving the entire riverine ecosystem. Water bodies, forest cover, and the way we treat the waters, water treatment at the settlements, basically places, towns, villages, you know, handling the grey water, sanitation, everything is part of the river rejuvenation. So that's exactly what Art of Living has taken up as river rejuvenation. So how did we start this? This is very interesting, right? I mean, we were working in many rural areas and water was a constant problem. We don't understand why the water problem, right? So let's get into some little history of why we went into and uh, what happened there. We were working in a particular village called Lakshmipura. It was one of the villages in Karnataka in Chikmangalore district. This particular area do fall under rain shadow area. Basically rainfall will be little less compared to the other areas. So this rain uh, shadow area had just 400 mm of rainfall. And every year, we did see the decline, the groundwater decline was almost by 3 to 2 meters. And some places even as drastic of 5 meters, We're trying to understand what is obviously. So the demand is rising, so water is going down. That's the normal logic. But we did try to see why is water not percolating in. The obvious answer would be rainfall is not much. Is rainfall reducing? We did see some studies on the rain, rainfall in that area for 5 years, so 10 years, 30 years and 50 years. We did take an average and average was same. That is was very surprising for us. So we said how is that the average rainfall seems to be the same and still the groundwater is depleting. Obviously the demand is increasing, we are extracting more, the water is going not percolating. That is making obvious but average rainfall seems to be the same. So that is something which took us into surprise. Then we got into, you know, discussion with various people. Art of Living is a big community, you know, a little, lot of devotees from a lot of, you know, places do come across. So we had our own scientists. We had people who are from ISRO, retired uh, ISRO scientists. We had hydrogeologists who have worked in the government for almost 30, 35 years. And that became a big team. At the same time, uh, Guruji Shri Shri Ravi Shankarji started uh, Volunteer for Better India. That also got a lot of volunteers, you know, people used to come in hundreds sometimes all weekend and clean all this uh, streams or water bodies. That became a huge momentum and that is how the whole river rejuvenation started. And this village, what we are talking about, Lakshmipura, we started working on it. We cleaned the river stream, we created a particular set of uh, uh, you know, structures to recharge all along the length of the stream. We created a water body there. So we could see a dramatic change in that village. That village also had a problem of fluorosis, a higher content of fluoride, which gives you a problem of fluorosis, where, you know, you start getting joint pains and all that. So we were trying to tackle that problem. So we did see the groundwater slightly increasing up. One rainfall, it did see some of the borewells dried up, sprung up 
and that is something which we were amazed with. So we got the scientists in, we could understand what is happening, we could create a very scientific based plan and execute it and a complete PPP model. So now we had a very perfect model and it worked and it worked amazing. Now something of this success has to be replicated, right? So it has to be taken to an entire area. So what is the entire area? Then we started discussing our scientists, SMEs. Should we do it in a particular settlement, particular political boundaries to see how we actually make it very successful? We said then water does not have a political boundary. Water has a hydrological boundary. So that is what we define as a watersheds, right? So we started defining this rejuvenation action plans across the entire watersheds or river basins. So we started with Kumudwati, which is very near to Bangalore. It's an urban watershed. And we also started in Vedavati, which is you know, a huge area of almost 5,447 square kilometer area. And we started working in those two areas. One was under CSR funding from uh, HAL, our partner. And one was under Manrega. Manrega, I don't know how many people know. Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guaranteed Act, which basically provides employment to people. So under that scheme, anyone can roll in and say, I want a job in a rural area uh, who comes under the gram, particular Gram Panchayat, Jilla Panchayat. Government has to provide him at least 100 days of job. And that is what the scheme is all about. And we utilize that. To come to that terms, to what scheme, also took us a lot of time. See, because I am trying to expand one village success into entire river basin. So it's important to understand how do I take success to the entire region. There are 1097 villages into what I'm talking about. From one village success story, replicate in 1000 plus villages. That's not easy. So we need money, we need people, we need strength of so much of communities. At the same time, one community w fully focused works out well. But what if it expands into major area like this? That was also an experiment which we thought we should put an effort to see how do we focus on each of the sub-verticals. One is scientific planning, one is community participation, one is engaging these people on a continuous basis. Engaging what? Only people? No, governments government agencies, various stakeholders, which are related to the water there. And that is very important because we have to bring in the money. We have to bring in the people. We have to ex ensure that execution ha happening right. We have to associate the technologies what we have. So everything has to converge into making the success. And that's how it happened. So scientific planning was an easy part because we had a team. Gurudev created a team and we got a team, we had the rolling in, we created an action plan. But the next task was to get the governments to play the role, get the funds, get convinced about our plan. It did not happen in one day. We were thrown out of our offices for at least 20, 25 times. Why? Because they didn't understand what we we're talking about. Are we planning to do a, such a big project with this kind of a schemes? Is that workable? Is that really doable? Is the usual question. Even we questioned ourselves. So that is something which happened. And we could deliver it. Because we worked with communities. Where we could associate children, youth, women, and the strength of the farmers. To bring in for them to understand. It was not easy again. The day when we went, everyone asked us a question. What is your stake in this? Are we getting money from the government? all that but once we successfully showed a pilot where you know uh, there is one interesting story which we need to talk about we had done this uh, pilot exercises in a couple of villages i think eight villages uh, to start with to give a demo to this entire uh, you know river basin activity one night a farmer by name uh, tamme gauda came running to us it was almost around nine or something and uh, probably a little even later than that and we went to his field trying to understand what he's talking about we could see a fountain you know a, out of his borewell 
which had gone dry for four years, it has sprung up, sprung up to everybody's surprise. And that is, that created a moment for every villager to understand that we are talking something, making sense here. They may have thought initially it as a miracle, but it's nothing miracle, it's very scientific facts on why that happened into that particular area. And something of this is what we wanted to replicate. And that success brought us word of mouth and it expanded and it expanded. Now we are working in four states like this. Tamil Nadu uh, saw the success of our Vedavati and Kumudvati projects in Karnataka. They started. And Tamil Nadu was another different success. There in Tamil Nadu, getting uh, men labor onto these uh, Manrega schemes is difficult because a lot of industries around, usually men labor don't come in. So there was a lot of women laborers who came in and that also took some time to make them understand. In fact, we got government officials from Tamil Nadu and even the people on the ground to come to the places where we had done in Karnataka and show them the success. And that is what also helped. Now, in recent uh, Man Ki Baat, I, I don't know if it's too recent, it probably um, a couple of months back, Modi talked about in his Man Ki Baat about the success of watershed activity under Manrega and especially of 20,000 women laborers working on this watershed activities. That's another success. These women started creating these cement rings. We just trained them once or twice probably with some help, our civil engineers help and we got them a dike and they started doing this all by themselves. And that is also enabling themselves on a financial or a livelihood thing. Those self-help group created some others in the, uh, you know, help them to create some more self-help groups in the different villages. And that success is something which we always talk about because it should not remain to a particular organization or a particular set of people doing it. It has to be a community approach. It has to be transformed into movement and that is what happened in these villages and that is success which I want to share uh, you know, uh, to everyone to see how this can be replicated and that is something which we need to work upon. And is all that done? What we have, we have accomplished everything? No. We have still a long way to go. Uh, we have only done four states, uh, especially Peninsular India, and we want to take it to Northern India. We want to take it to the Northeastern area, Western, uh, you know, Kutch and Rajasthan, Mumbai, the basaltic zone, middle of it, Madhya Pradesh. So we want to expand it all through. Should we do it in entire India then? No, it is always people which is important. So we'll create models. We'll say what would be the success possibility everyone can replicate. Or we can learn from others who have replicated in their own specific area and learn and build a, a platform for everyone to learn as well. So that is something what we have in vision to you know, expand this whole river rejuvenation activity into entire India. I know there have been calls from African countries, there have been calls from South American countries, there have been calls from various part, you know, uh, even Kashmir had a water problem. Do you believe that? So, there are various places, various needs, various problem sources. So, we have to tackle that, we have to work together and that is where we need more people, more young blood, that is very, very, very much required and that is why I was very happy when I have to address the crowd, you know, to see how you know, one has to come along, work on water, understand. It's only that needs uh, a will to do it, right? As we say that in all of our activities. So any individual can work on that. How do we? Just by looking at your own house, how do you use the water? Is water judiciously used? Is your plumbing activity done well? You know, as simple as that. Or we have a non-portable water at your, you know, commodes and fresh water at your kitchen taps. Is that separated or use the fresh water all along? So all the simple things, how do we, you know, water budget for your particular um, uh, apartment, community? Can we do rainwater harvesting better? You may not know technically, you may not need to know technically, you can come to us or come to any technical people who can help you out, help you out in planning. It's quite possible. So all is important is for you to look around, one at home, one surroundings, 
at your community, wherever. You have a water body which is failing, which is getting dark, it's grey. Is there something which you can do about it? So there is absolute possibility. I say it again, it's an absolute possibility that you as an individual can work and solve the problem. Just get the right people associated, motivate the community, right? Take a technical help from organization like ours and, you know, work on that. Everyone can be a water professional. So what do we do with that? Is we train people, we create master trainers so that you understand the water cycle, you understand the water problems, water issues. You can be able to, by doing that part of, a, you know, uh, master trainer course, you will understand what would be, how do we basically identify the issues, how do we, you know, make people aware of the water crisis. So that is something which is very much needed. So you can join hands, you can be a master trainer, you can work in your community, you can say, identify the issues, report it back to us and say we can work together. So after all that what we have done, another important element of looking at us is a very positive climate change. How do you say so? Because there has been the groundwater improvement. Along with that, the soil moisture has improved. The precipitation and uh, percolation has increased. So the hydrological cycle is coming to some sense of normalcy. I'm not saying that we have achieved all through, but there's still a long way to go. But there is a climate, positive climate action which has been taken. And can you be part of it? Yes, everyone here can be part of it. I welcome all of you. Please join. Thank you.